Hey everybody, it's Will. Uh, I am going to do a quick video about a Earth Dawn character I am in the process of still creating for a 3rd edition Roll20 game that's going to start this week. A uh, uh, brief backstory to this, I made a video uh, in my channel, you can see where I talked about my top 3 Earth Dawn moments. Uh, a fellow who runs the largest Earth Dawn Facebook group uh, saw the video, liked it, and uh, invited me into uh, the group uh, where, you know, basically talk about Earth Dawn. I highly recommend you check it out. But uh, yeah, uh, through the course of just interacting with people as I got into the group, I found out someone was starting a Roll20 game on uh, uh, weekday evenings. I'm able to do this now with my new job, so I decided I'd jump at the chance to do it. Uh, and I made a character going in, the only two requisites I had, preconditions I had, I should say, were that I don't play a Windling because it's all I've ever played, and I don't play a Spellcaster, which is all I've ever played. Uh, at the same time, I didn't want to just play a, you know, straight-to-type adept because... You know, I'm a lot older now than when I started playing Earth Dawn. I understand RPGs in a different way. My play style has, has evolved quite a bit. So I wanted to create a character that is narratively interesting and challenging to play and fits in with the, the uh, campaign well. My understanding is that it is set before the Theron invasion of Barsay. Uh, so this is going to take place, you know, after the scourge, for lack of a better word, halts. And, you know, basically the kingdoms of Barsave are sort of rediscovering the world. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a wild period in the, the settings history where, you know, nobody's really sure what happens next. Uh, so I went into it and I wanted to make a sword master, but I didn't want to do... Uh, one of the meta types that lends itself better to a Swordmaster character like a Scrang, an Elf, or a Human. I wanted to go with a Dwarf. It's challenging because Dwarves have a low Charisma, and Charisma is a prime stat for Swordmaster. So uh, I basically just, you know, spent most of my points on bumping my Charisma as high as possible. And then, um, you know... Everything else is kind of run-of-the-mill for a uh, character. Um, and as I started working on the, you know, talents and skills more and more, I kept thinking to myself, well, you know, if he's a sword master, you know, what's, what's his deal? What's, you know, how's a dwarf, a very charismatic dwarf, fall into this? And I thought, well, you know, maybe he's not, uh, uh, you know, Maybe this is an opportunity to do something that you can't really do in a lot of other RPG systems, and that is make a character that is mediocre at what they do without them, you know, being able to contribute to uh, the uh, group. Uh, I, kind of a comparative would be to say if you made a fighter in D&D &D and you took low strength and low dex and low con, you... That's a terrible thing to do. You couldn't do that in this system. Earth Dawn, because um, the disciplines are more nuanced and because of the innate nature of the mechanics where, you know, magic buttresses a lot of what you do, you can do something like this. You know, my focus with this character is more in um, charisma-based talents and skills uh, while he would be effective in a fight, you know, certainly I've, you know, looked at the, the stats for, you know, his attacks and things like that. You know, I took avoid blow, you know, he's got maneuver and parry. Uh, he, you know, compared to if I made a Scrang sword master and just build him to be like really good at fighting, he would be, you know, comparatively kind of, you know, not bad, but just run of the mill and I started thinking okay how does this fit into the character so right now this is a work in progress but my basic thinking is he's a, a disaffected noble rake uh, I'm drawing a lot of inspiration from how Arkin the Black from Warhammer 40 uh, Warhammer fantasy battles is portrayed in the uh, Nagash uh, legends books where he starts out as kind of this like 
you know, he's a minor noble, but because he's like a fourth or fifth son or whatever, you know, he doesn't really, you know, he's not looked to to do a lot of stuff. He still has to go to court and do courtier things, but at the same time, you know, he doesn't really have a lot of uh, of direction in life. Um, and I feel like that's where this character is going to be going, especially considering that, you know, the theory of invasion hasn't happened yet and nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, I, I like the idea of starting this character out without a sense of purpose and, you know, kind of being more of a, a, a charming rogue, you know, not an actual rogue adept, but like, you know, he was, he trained in the sword master discipline because, you know, at he probably was still, you know, around while the scourge was still happening and defending the care, defending Thrall would be more important than, you know, anything else. So they would obviously gear towards that. But it may be something that he doesn't feel like he's, you know, necessarily geared to. And what happens with this is that I can adjust this character as the game progresses, as the group makes choices narratively as the game master makes choices narratively and as I make choices narratively, I'm able to have this flexibility you don't get in other systems to say, okay, well, maybe something happens in the game and he realizes it's important to study the way of the sword to, you know, be able to contribute to his clan, to contribute to Thrall and to act more honorably, essentially. On the other hand, maybe he just gets disillusioned with combat, com like not combat necessarily, but disillusioned with his discipline completely and decides to switch over to, you know, learning about being a troubadour adept or learning about being a rogue adept. I, I, I feel like doing something like this is just, it's real interesting. It's challenging, but not in a way that making a fighter in D&D &D with bad stats would be challenging like it's just it's it's the opposite like i i could still help the group i could still be a capable fighter you know push come to shove but i, I i'm able to have these choices that will you know as the game progresses let me kind of influence the narrative of both the 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 game as a whole and the character and kind of develop an arc I like setting that kind of thing up. Uh, I did sneak in a clever little 40K reference with his name, which is Sholto Unworth. Uh, if you're not familiar, this name is from the Ravador books by uh, Dan Abnett, uh, very famous uh, 40K novels about the Inquisitor Gideon Ravener. In the first edition, uh, single, uh, first edition prints of these no uh, novels, which I had, uh, Sholto Unworth is a rogue trader who talks about being uh, descended from squats. They edited that out when they released the omnibus and every other print edition of the single books after that. He does not make these references. But I decided I was going to sneak it in. It's sufficiently, you know, I think a cool name. I like the unworth kind of fits in with uh, him being maybe unworthy. So yeah, I think this is a, a neat direction. You know, feel free to comment if you've got different ideas about it or, you know, if you don't like my videos and hate me or whatever, that's fine. Cool, man. It's the internet. So yep, I just wanted to make a quick video and talk about that. And as always, like, you know, subscribe. Don't like, don't subscribe. That's fine. You're cool. All right. Thanks.